And we're live. It's WAN Show time again. Welcome to the best show that takes place on Friday afternoon on this particular channel. That's all? <laughs> That's, yes. I mean, I wouldn't compare it to anything else because nothing else is really quite like the WAN Show. Fair um, enough. So I have a special co-host this week and the story behind this is actually a good one. So Alex here has actually worked at Linus Media Group for the better part of two, almost like two years now. Is that right? No. Close. Yeah, yeah, pretty close. Wow. So this will be your two year like annual performance review coming up like yes. next month. Yeah. That's incredible. So on his performance review will be a lot of good things. Like Alex has done a great job of our laptop content, a lot of our more makery content. He installed the single most dangerous thing in our entire studio uh, a few weeks ago. Mm. CNC, you don't agree that's the most dangerous thing in our studio? Probably not. Okay, what's more dangerous? Um, Other than Dennis with a power tool, that doesn't count. You don't get to just take Dennis plus something and create something more dangerous than the CNC because I, you could just have Dennis oh no, plus there, the CNC. There was that time when the laptop cart the like AC power screwed up and it was just like the whole laptop cart had AC power. Okay, but I'm talking present <laughs> tense, the most dangerous thing in our office. <clears throat> that was pretty bad. <laughs> that was a bad scene. <laughs> uh, anyway, there's gonna be lots of good things. But then we had him on to host an episode of Tech Linked <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. And um, so actually we, the first time he did it was a couple months ago. And I watched it, and I was like, okay, yeah. Like, you kind of warmed up mm -hmm. more towards the end. And you had your moments. You had, like, some pretty brilliant moments. Like, the intro I thought was great. Um, <laughs> and I, I checked in, and I was like, so you didn't realize the camera was on yet? No. Slash didn't realize they were going to use it. No, I knew that. You knew they were going to use it. Okay, that's not what yeah. you said in our meeting. <laughs> anyway. Sure. Yeah, whoa, well, well. Anyway, the point is, there were these moments of brilliance, and I was like, okay, there's potential here, but you and I need to kind of meet about hosting style before, before you do another one. And then we did, and then he was hosting another one, and halfway through, I was just like, I think we're creating more pressure and more tension with me standing here and like trying to help you through this, as opposed to helping. So new plan. You're going to help co-host The WAN Show, get a little bit more comfortable on camera, and we're going to go from there. So we've got a lot of great topics for you guys this week. <laughs> what do you got? What's your top picks for topics? Um, so get it, AMD top picks, did really top well. Picks. Yes. Oh. oh, I didn't, and now I wish that I really didn't. <laughs> Sorry, what, what do you got? Um, AMD, they have 64-core Epic processors. You might say they're don't, Epic. Don't, don't. Oh. <laughs> That's like two in a row that are brutal. <laughs> and, oh, I don't even see it here, but there was more news about AMD. That's just not great. What news was that? Well, they... That's not embargoed, is it? That's not something like we're working on that you overheard like me and Anthony discussing, is it? Um, no. Oh, okay. As long as you can find an article that you can cite, throw that in the doc and we'll pull it up later. But the rumors around AMD's Radeon RX 590 don't look particularly promising. What does look promising is Samsung's promise to unveil flexible display phones moving forward. We'll be talking, talking about that a little bit. And uh, this doesn't look promising. This is actually just more annoying than anything else. Apple is apparently blocking Linux installs on computers equipped with their latest T2 security job. What are they trying to secure at this point? Okay, sorry, we'll discuss it in more detail later. First, the intro. That works. It works sometimes. It still just always a surprise, though. We really need to update it. It's so old. Like, this intro was created back when we sat on a couch. Yeah! Yeah, we used to sit on a couch that looks just like that. We even had like a little red cushion that that cushion. Man, by the time we got rid of that couch, it was disgusting. <laughs> because there would be times when we'd be hosting the WAN show on like a pretty warm afternoon. Um, the old office didn't have air conditioning. And like even this one, being out here in the warehouse during the mm -hmm. summer, like it it didn't have air conditioning until the very end of the summer this year. We actually never got to turn it on, I don't think. You know we have air conditioning out here now, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, 
Look, there's one unit here, oh, and then there's cool. one over on the other side. Uh, the crappy air conditioning installers are the reason that our roof leaks right now. Oh, I was kind of wondering what caused that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, fix one problem, create another. That's life for you, right? Um, so anyway, that, that cushion. I would usually put it behind me because the Ikea couch Ugh. that we bought for the WAN show was sort of like not really the right proportions for me. Mm -hmm. Like the, the cushions they're were too long. They're just not comfortable. For my, okay, I was being kind. I was being <laughs> kind. So maybe they're not comfortable for anyone because Alex doesn't look like it right now because he's slouching a lot. And it's the maybe, chair. maybe it's more in his legs, but he's a lot taller than me. So if it doesn't work for me and it doesn't work for you, it probably doesn't work for most people. So I would always have this cushion behind me and I'm a bit of a back sweater. So that cushion was never washed. And for literally years, once a week, I would, I would soak back sweat into it. So it Ugh. had like this kind of, you know, that musky smell that like, Attracts the ladies? No, not that kind of musk. <laughs> <laughs> no, the really gross musk. Um, Luke's out this week. For those of you who are asking, thank you for asking. Let's appreciate. Let's appreciate new new Luke because James is new Luke, so you don't get to be new Luke. You're like you can be new James, except that I what? think you were hard at the same time. <laughs> um. All right. What topic do you want to jump into? Do you want to talk about AMD's 64 core epic processors? Uh, sure. They're 64 cores, seven nanometer. Awesome. Uh, and this is why you were kicked off TechLinked. <laughs> so AMD is really, really turning the turning the what are they what are they called thumb screws? Yeah, turning the thumb screws on Intel. That that's a torture device. Thumb screws. No, not that no, kind of thumb screws. Thumb screws, they just go in your case. No, no, thumb screws are a thing. Hold on a minute. No, no, we're gonna use my screen to Google it because okay, thumb screws, uh, torture. Okay, thumb screw torture. Thank you, thumb screw. There you go. Boom. Oh, that looks horrible. Yeah. I really don't want that on my yeah. thumbs. So it's bad. So you twist, you put the thumbs in there is my understanding. Actually here, this one looks pretty brutal. And then you you twist this thing, a wing nut, and it uh, I think just like shatters the bones in your thumb. Um, simple vice with protruding studs, victim's thumbs, fingers, or toes were placed in the vice and slowly crushed. Um, so uh, that's what AMD is doing to Intel, basically putting a lot of pressure on them right now to figure out how to respond to the onslaught. Because last year, with the launch of their Ryzen processors and the launch of their Epic processors, AMD got competitive. Now it's yeah. starting to look a little more interesting. It's not like it's not like watching an exciting horse race where. <laughs> You know which horse is going to win, but the other one is giving her the old college try. This is mm -hmm. like watching a race where sometimes horse one wins and sometimes horse two wins. Um, so with Zen 2, we are expecting to see IPC improvements to the desktop chips. Meanwhile, Intel hasn't managed to do anything other than bump core counts in the last couple of years. And on the server side of things, because remember, this is where the big money is made. This is where Intel has products in their lineup that cost anywhere between $2,000 to $10,000 per chip. And we talk about like expensive consumer CPUs. Mm -hmm. Like when you're reviewing a laptop and I say, okay, it's got a $500 or $500 HQ, uh, or excuse me, HK processor in it. Yeah. You're going... That's not a whole lot sometimes, but in this, a lot. I think typically you would say that's expensive. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It depends. You usually whine about them. Well, yeah, but that's normally because they're not cooled. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so in those cases, you're paying the extra for it and you aren't getting extra performance because they run really quite warm and they end up throttling. Um, but anyway, so in the context of something like a $1,500 laptop, a $500 CPU is really expensive. In the context of a server, you know, you could easily spend thousands of dollars on a CPU. Like they kind of start where the high-end consumer level chips end. And the craziest thing about it is we're not talking, you know, Alex Clark and his one laptop and mm -hmm. one desktop. 
or Linus Sebastian and his one laptop and handful of desktops. We're talking gigantic data centers. Uh, like, what was that place you checked out? How many CPUs did they have at? Um, um, 6,000 at LIGO. Yeah, at LIGO, right. And so was that 6,000 CPUs or 6,000 boxes with two CPUs each? Um, I don't remember exactly, but it was a whole bunch of blade servers that were set up with a bunch of Xeons in them. Like, I think that they had a bunch of 24 and 16 core processors. So in an installation like that, yeah, 24 and 16 core processors. That's <laughs> So in an installation like that, all of a sudden, AMD is now competitive in the lucrative data center market. And with Epic, I don't think anyone, even AMD, really expected their Epic processors to come in and like immediately steal half of Intel's market share. Because the reality of it is that the data center market doesn't move that quickly. The way that the, these products get validated is over a much longer period of time. And the planning that goes on for these kinds of installations just means that even if AMD had the world's best supercomputer processor today, it is unlikely you'd actually see the, like an actual supercomputer built with them for another 12, 18, or even 24 months. That's the way that it works for those kinds of things. So AMD got competitive when they launched Epic and when they launched Ryzen. Now they're saying Zen 3 and Zen 4 are on track. They demonstrated a seven nanometer Epic Rome, codename Rome processor with 64 cores. And they've had some time for the industry to get used to the idea that they might wanna plan on using AMD for these installations. So you have to have the jab and the hook so the first one was the jab. Hey, by the way, we're here. Pay attention to us. This is the, hey, you've got us in the back of your mind. Hey, guess what? It gets even better. Boom! 64 core processor. Oh, by the way, did we mention we're cheaper? Oh, by the way, did we mention that we support these massive amounts of memory? Oh, by the way, remember all those PCI Express lanes that we have and our competitor doesn't? They're still there. And then like, I think that the real like Deadpool like crotch to the face is the fact that it's also infinitely scalable. Like they can just, as Intel would say, just glue on the course and just keep on doing it. There was <laughs> such a there was such a jelly vibe from that jab from <laughs> Intel when they were talking about AMD gluing cores together. Yes, okay, technically gluing cores together is a more technical term than it sounds like. But it still it just had this like it had this salty vibe to it that they were just like kind of petulant about it. Like, well their core their CPUs aren't real because they're just they just got toothpicks and <laughs> and bottle caps and glue, and they put them together like that. Well, they still are working pretty well, so watch and out, In bud. this context, I think it makes a lot of sense, because right now, Intel is also just like putting two CPUs on a board. Yeah, so that was on just Monday that Intel announced their 48-core Xeon, which appears to be two CPUs on like a on a substrate is that is that what it looked like or I think so yeah you'll have to it's not a ton of details in our notes I actually didn't look that closely at it because it requires a new socket um, I think it has like 12 channel memory but it's my understanding again don't quote me on this uh, I'm, I might as well just look it up for you yeah. but my but... understanding is it has 12 channel memory in big quotes uh, Multi-chip package. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so original article then is from a non-tech, and I'm basically going to read it with you guys here. Scaling up to 48 cores per CPU. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, wow. Where did that mute button go? Oh, wow. Wow. I'm sorry, everyone. There we go. <laughs> Battlefield 5. Blah, blah, blah. Yep, here we go. Typical. Oh, no, that's a four socket something or other. Okay, two socket system, Intel, Xeon. Yeah, here we go. So yeah, technically there's these 12 memory channels, but that's just because we are basically looking at two CPUs on a single package. And then this is where it gets really crazy. These things get a new socket that is gonna have, uh, hold on, oh wow. Current 24 core, uh, platinum runs at 205 watts. We don't know what oh. frequency they're gonna run at. 24 cores per die. Wow, PCIe lanes. Oh, wait, okay, so PCIe lanes. Anywhere between 48, 24 per die, or 96, 48 per die, which, again, would be identical to just running four CPUs in a quad socket board. Um, I'm trying to find the memory channels bit. 
It's just, it's just nuts. I wish I could find the socket. Two socket server, 12 DDR channel. Wow, that ad played again as I scrolled back up. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. The point is, this thing is redonkulous, and AMD, instead of launching like a new platform, so new socket, new chipset, weird CPUs that are like actually more literally glued together, AMD is refreshing an existing socket, which, like I said, in the data center space, in the enterprise space, matters because these kinds of deployments take time to plan. And just because they plan things over a long period of time doesn't mean that they can't leverage the most up-to-date components if the supplier has a roadmap that makes any sense. So if AMD says, okay, look, here's our epic platform. I still kind of hate that <laughs> called it that. Here's our epic platform. E-P-Y-C, here's our epic platform. Here's the servers that are based on this. Oh, hey, we're a month from your deployment. You haven't actually cut your PO yet. By the way, we just doubled the core count or we have a higher frequency part that it's at the same price and the same TDP. Go ahead and chuck those in instead. Great. Whereas when you're rolling out an all new platform, well, that thro that throws a complete wrench. You, you can't just swap that into a deployment. It doesn't work that way. So AMD looks to be firing on all cylinders right now, and Intel is still Yeah, and it's struggling. already on what? Amazon Web Services and 10% cheaper than Intel-based solutions? Dun, dun, dun. And while we're at it, I guess AMD announces the Radeon Instinct, which seems like it should be awesome, but... I think it's mostly for blockchain and cryptocurrency. So the Instinct MI60 and the MI50. So these are aimed at the enterprise uh, accelerator market with AMD looking to significantly improve their performance competitiveness in everything from HPC to machine learning. So these would be the kinds of things that they would do at SFU's um, supercomputers. So yeah. researchers who are working on um, Oh man, I forget what some of the examples of things that they were doing there were, but things like simulation, um, like processing gigantic data sets, um, those can be accelerated by GPU compute. What, I What's the biology stuff that they do? Um, sequencing. Yep, that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, we're, we're just kind of guessing. That's just what that space does. I don't know how much market share AMD actually gained with their initial instinct processors, but... These look like uh, an improvement. So they've got support for half rate double precision up from 1 16th rate. So they've got, uh, so this is especially useful for machine learning inferencing where high precision isn't necessary. Okay. Oh no, they have new low precision data types. That's useful for machine learning inferencing where high precision isn't necessary. And they're also able to get up to four times the performance of an FP16 data type when using the smallest in four data. Okay. Okay. So basically they've got some new some new modes that they operate in pretty much. Mm -hmm. Peak throughput of 7.4 teraflops, FP64, 14.7 FP32. So, okay, neat. Yeah. I mean, this is the kind of thing that won't have a lot of relevance to you and me necessarily, at least if the rumors on the street are to be believed with respect to AMD's consumer GPUs. So the original article is from WCCF Tech, so we'll have to take it with the grain of salt that people yeah. seem to think we should take it with. From my experience, their rumor stuff isn't really any worse than anyone else's rumor <laughs> stuff. Like, is it? I don't know. Um, but apparently their third Polaris GPU revision is coming, and it's going to be called the RX 590. So, oh, wow, it looks like they've even gotten their hands on the AMD confidential, NDA required, under embargo until... Oh, there's this thing there that says comments. I can't see when it's <laughs> under embargo till. But uh, this looks like an official AMD slide deck. Um, I don't even know why they bother having embargoes at this point. Well, I don't even know why they bother calling it something new at this point. Making this GPU. <laughs> yeah. if, if the rumors are true... Um, it has um, It'll be based on 2,304 cores compared to the Radeon RX 580's 200, 
or 2,304 cores. Yep, so that's the same number of cores. Um, How much RAM does it have? 8 gigabytes. Compared to? The 8 gigabytes. Okay. The um, bus width is 556 bit compared to 556. Okay. And the name is 590, though. That's that's a change. That's a change. That's an improvement. And it's slightly higher clocked. Okay. So So what we don't know right now, because we can see on that main title slide, um, latest generation FinFET 12, that it could be going from 14 nanometer to 12 nanometer, sort of. Because if it uses TSMC's 12 nanometer process, that might actually be an improvement to power characteristics and performance. If it uses Global Foundry's 12 nanometer, that's actually based very closely, like I, it might even be a little disingenuous to call it 12 nanometer compared to the 14 nanometer process that AMD was already using on the RX 580. So, so, um, do they have, actually, do they have leaked die sizes here at all? Uh, no. Because that might tell us something interesting. No, they don't. So what we don't know is if this 12 nanometer shrink is just giving us some better power efficiency. Actually, do they have rated power, power draw? No. No, nothing leaked in power draw either. So it's possible that these are just overclocked. But, I mean, really, this was all AMD could come up with. Uh, to say, to sell this thing. Latest generation FinFET 12, which quite frankly, in my personal opinion, should not be a selling feature that you put in front of a consumer. <laughs> does that seem fair? Yeah. Why does my cousin care what FinFET process you're using? He's not going to. What matters is how many FPS, how many dollars I pay, what cool features it has, like, you know, um automatic you know gameplay recording or special anti-aliasing modes or whatever the case may be or drivers that work yeah how many fin fets it has doesn't matter okay selling point number two aggressive tuning for higher clocks so we already have that graphics card that's called the rx 580 oc okay enhanced idle and multi-monitor efficiency that is a driver improvement and finally <laughs> Expanded options and robust partner designs. So basically they're saying they're not making a reference card. Is uh, that what that sounds like to you? Yeah. Because that's what that sounds like to me. All right, so expected, I'm not impressed. Expected pricing is 250 to 300 US. What was the 580? Right around there. I think they should just call it the 580X and then we would be like, awesome, they made a faster 580. Good job, guys. Instead of being like, it's a 580, but now we're mad. <laughs> you know, that is a really good point. And it's actually not a video about an AMD product, but we do have a video coming up about a product that is currently embargoed. So I can't say what it is, unfortunately, which is really frustrating because <laughs> it would make this story more interesting. But basically, we've got a product that we've got our hands on already and we've been testing. And the manufacturer refused to disclose to us certain aspects of the specifications of the device. Mm -hmm. And here's the stupid thing about it. It makes me feel kind of disrespected. Yeah, like we have it. We in have our it hands. in our hands. And we can measure these characteristics. It's not particularly complicated to do so. So they're either disrespecting our competence because they don't <laughs> think that if they don't tell us, we'll be able to put two and two together here, mm -hmm. or they are disrespecting our time because now we have to invest time to measure something that they could have simply provided on a spreadsheet, or they are disrespecting our thoroughness because they don't think that we're gonna bother to talk about this like, there's no way that I can slice this and feel respected. Maybe they're disrespecting our viewers. That's another way, because they don't seem to think that they need the full story. So why make it any easier to get there? Like, can you come up with a way that not providing some speck of your product 
is respectful to your partners because that's what the media are. Mm. No, I can't. And it's just, it's just baffling. And that's what I honestly, that's what I feel like a lot of these kinds of skews, um, whether the 590 turns out to be what it looks like it might be, which is just a rehash of the 580, but like maybe from a different supplier, depending on what manufacturer they're using for the chips. Um, and this other thing that I'm talking about, it just like these, these rebrands, it just feels like why even bother then? Why even seed us a unit? Why not just say outright, we are trying to mislead the general consumer into thinking this is something new when it isn't. Actually, do you think they're doing the 590 because they did the 580 whatever SP? The They rebranded the 570 to be a 580. I really don't like what AMD is doing on their GPU side. Like, I understand why they're doing it. They're doing it because they got nothing. <laughs> it's like, it's very obvious. They just, they got nothing. And NVIDIA has new stuff that they are obviously planning to roll out. And AMD's like, well, that's the way it works. Like when your competitor launches something, you got to launch something. So if we can't launch something new, I guess we'll launch what we already got. Um, and they already did that with the, with the 580. 580. <laughs> but at least they called it something different. <laughs> no, that's what they're doing again. They're just no, calling it like... something different. No, the 580 did. I, okay, my understanding is the 580 was a different die, okay. even though it was only slightly, <laughs> slightly optimized. Okay, so actually, okay, four, you're right. you're 480, right. Okay. All right. All 2304, right. 590, same thing. <laughs> oh, AMD. When is the last time AMD launched a new graphics card? Well, they did Vega, but. Yeah. They, they, they don't exist, really? Do they not? Like, can you buy a Vega 56 on Newegg? Like, you couldn't during the whole mining thing. Like, they were um, impossible to get. But I don't really know why you would. Like, you can get them in an iMac Pro. Yeah, okay. There's an ASRock. <laughs> there's an ASRock reference card on Newegg. Uh, there's a Power Color Mini. That's pretty cool. Or nano rather. Oh, cool. Um, okay, yeah, there's a handful of they Vega exist. 56s in stock. But then, like, okay, let's take a pretty well-known brand like um, XFX. You could make the argument XFX is kind of to AMD what EVGA is to NVIDIA. At least you used to mm -hmm. be able to. They used to have like a lifetime warranty and stuff. Actually, I don't think they do anymore. Anyway, let's take some brand, XFX, and let's try to buy 10 of these. And let's update our cart. Um, how do you update your cart? Update quantities. And it's looking like that you know 1070s what? are considerably cheaper. They've got, uh, no, they've got 10 in stock though. So apparently, oh. no, they've got, okay, Newegg used to correct you. Like, <laughs> like here, let's see, because there's no way they have like 50 of these things. Yeah, okay, oh. they have 49 of okay. these in stock. So apparently they're actually selling. All right, maybe we didn't give RX Vega enough credit. Or maybe they have 49 in stock because they can't figure out how to get rid of them. I don't know. <laughs> the point is, I don't like what AMD is doing on the graphics side of things, but uh, at the end of the day, as long as they're kicking ass on one side of the business, then it seems like yeah. they can keep surviving. Because for a while there, it was graphics that was keeping them alive. And they're like, okay, you guys, just just please, just carry us deadweight CPU guys until we can until we can get Zen out, and then and then you can rest. <laughs> um, all right. Okay, so Apple blocking Linux installs. Why would they uh, do this? Yeah, I just don't get it. Who like cares? Like, okay, so the source was GDO 463 on the forum. The original article here is from the register. Okay, walk us through this. What is going on here? I have no idea, and I don't understand why it would happen. So they're blocking Linux? That's all that I know. I really felt like this article was addressed to me personally. And I, um, <laughs> I realize now <laughs> it's the other Linux. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's like, whoa, what? Because I was actually like seriously considering the MacBook Air until I realized that it doesn't have the quad core eighth gen processors, which was really I know. baffling to me. Um, actually, our MacBook Air is go not going to arrive till Tuesday, so you guys are going to have to wait for our content on the MacBook Air. But I was so amped on this thing because I didn't watch the keynote 
or attend the event. I just got excited because like Apple was finally launching a new MacBook Air. And I was like, Alex, because he wanted to do the review. Yeah, I wanted it really bad because I thought the same thing. And I then I was Gen. like, Alex, I don't think you're going to get to do it because I think I might even use it as a daily driver. <laughs> like I'm going to boot camp it. And I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to give Mac OS a shot because I do every once in a while. And um, then he gets, he replies to me. I think this is on the Hangouts or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, it's a dual core. And I was like, no, 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 it's eighth gen. Sure, <laughs> eighth gen Core i7. Surely they have a quad core option. And no, yeah, we just found the stuff. It's like, why? <laughs> like everything. Like not, not this it's got, surface. It's got but... all the Thunderbolt ports and it's <sighs> all sexy and it's got the battery life. It could have finally just been... We could have finally like, had the laptop we're both waiting for. Because, like, you're on the Surface laptop. Yeah. And here, you know what? This, this is awesome. 30-second review of that. Go. Okay. Best keyboard. Best screen because it's 4x3. Overall, just generally awesome. No Thunderbolt sucks. Okay. Like, I'm not plugged in right now because... No, no way. No, can't do it. Right, oh. you'd need a DisplayPort to HDMI adapter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here I go with the Razer Blade Stealth. Pretty good build quality, pretty good keyboard, nice big trackpad, could be bigger. Okay display, it's fine I guess. Has Thunderbolt, so eGPU, very nice, mediocre battery life. And I don't like the keyboard at all. And he doesn't like the keyboard at all. So we're both kind of waiting for something to be perfect. And people are probably yelling right now that the Dell XPS 13 has all of that, but I just don't like it. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, it's I just thicker. kind of open it up, and the screen's really small, and you can only get like the 4K one, and then everything's really crammed, or you don't get touch. And honestly, 4K displays on a screen that size make no sense, because once you start scaling Windows like 250%, Stuff does look kind of stupid. Like I, and I know that that's an aesthetic quibble and that's maybe not legitimate or whatever, but either of us could use an XPS 13 and we don't, so deal with it. <laughs> um, oh, people are saying the Graham build quality is trash. Yeah, well. It's not trash. Not on all it's of them. It's pretty good. We don't like the 15. Yeah, but the 13 doesn't have Thunderbolt. And the 13 doesn't have Thunderbolt. See, this is a problem. <laughs> you know what though, that new HP Envy. That new, the X360 yes. that we looked at in the writer's meeting? Are, are we getting one? I'm not sure. Okay, having... tell you what, let's just buy one if we can't get one. All right. Okay, so yeah, sure. let's let's get one of those because do we agree that one looks promising? It does, yeah. If, if the battery life is on point and the build quality, I, I have yet to encounter an HP laptop keyboard that has lit a fire in my soul though. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I'm really worried about because for better, like, for better or for worse, you can make an amazing laptop. You can make the perfect laptop. And if it doesn't have a decent screen, you will never sell it to either of the people sitting behind this desk right now. <laughs> did I say screen? Keyboard. You did say screen, yeah. Keyboard, keyboard for me is the main thing. Keyboard is key. And touch screen, I, I can't just use like a non-touch screen anymore. Keyboard is key. I was just trying to go past that, come on. <laughs> I guess that the MacBook doesn't have a touchscreen, but. Uh. Yeah, actually, touchscreen's kind of a big deal to me, too. All right. It's like, one thing that we do do a lot <laughs> that people probably don't know is the like teleprompter, like the ghetto one. Where you're I kind know, of, like, right? We'll be like here. You're, you're kind of reflecting, but yeah. <laughs> so we'll literally be like on location somewhere. Where's the last place that you and I did together? Um, I'm thinking of General Fusion, but I know we've done one since then. I, did we do that before or after the uh, the trip down to SpaceX? Um, I don't remember. I, don't... I think we had a prompter at SpaceX. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Anyway, but all of CES. Um, you know what? We're going to have to get back to this because we haven't done our sponsors for the show yet. Oh, goodness. <laughs> uh, sponsor number one is Be Quiet. Oh, wow. Um, oh, God. Um, this is complicated. So... Uh, I'm just gonna sit back. Hold on. Yeah, sure. This is ah the Silent Base 801. Ooh! Oh, I just goodness. pulled the filter off the front. No, no, wait. You're gonna hit the mic. Okay, right there. Okay, I'm gonna put that filter back. 
Did I put it back right? Okay. Oh, good. Okay, cool. You know, what I really I, like. It's really back. It's backwards. Hold, don't hit the mic. Don't hit the mic. That will 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 hurt off. everyone. Oh goodness. Dang it. Okay. Okay, we're, we're turning it the wrong way. Also. Yeah, I know. Right. It's backwards. Okay. Tell you what. Here, you take the side panel off. Okay, this is. Okay, this is really easy. I swear, when like Linus isn't holding it. <laughs> What are you doing? Okay, there okay, we go. Here, let's try that. Let's okay. try that again. Meanwhile, <laughs> be quiet's watching this. They're just like, really, you guys? There. Oh, okay. Got your acoustic dampening stuff in there. Trust me, it's in there. I can't see. That's fine. Anyway, that's the back panel. So you got your SSD mounts. You got really nice built-in fan control, which is awesome. Uh, these are interesting, but from the other side. So you can kind of use them to route cables from over here. Or from the other side, what's neat is that you can install all the three and a half inch hard drives you want or leave it completely blank. It's totally up to you. So there's three SSD mounts back there. Um, moving around to the front, is this literally the case that we used for that build or is this the well, second yes. one? Oh, or so no. Different case. Oh, okay. About the same case. About the same one. Yeah, okay. So we actually have a build coming in this where we're going to do like the fastest gaming PC. Tempered glass side panel. Of course, the year is 2018. You got to have that. Included Pure Wings fans. I believe it's three of them. Yep. Two oh, in the front, you. one in the back. Uh, you've also got these are those three and a half inch cages that you can install all up and down here. Um, really nice clean basement here, so you don't have to see your, here. Can you hold that for a second? Yeah. So you don't have to see your power supply wires or anything like that. Like it's really easy and really quick to do a nice clean build in it. I have no idea what Be Quiet's talking points were for this thing. So, you know, we, we must've got them. We probably missed a handful of them, but it is what it is at this point. Oh, goodness. <laughs> And that was the last time Be Quiet ever worked with us. FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the super simple to use invoicing tool that actually does a lot more than help you create and send slick looking invoices. It helps you track your time with their timesheet function, manage your expenses, and keep track of who owes you what. It also has a feature that tells you when your client looks at your invoice for the first time. The mobile app has all the functionality of the desktop version, so you can take it with you on the go. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to their support staff where you'll speak to a real human. No phone tree, no escalations, no return calls, just answers. Go to freshbooks.com slash when and get a free trial today. Make sure you enter when show in the how did you hear about us section and finally savage jerky oh yes sriracha teriyaki i was i was taking that no well okay hold on a second we've got reaper i'm going for the sriracha bacon all right what a wuss all right i'm gonna have some what? sriracha teriyaki savage jerky it's made with high quality ingredients without nitrates or preservatives their goal was to create a snack that was full of flavor and spice, but that isn't bad for you. They've got 13 different flavors of jerky, like the sriracha bacon and maple buffalo bacon, which is my personal favorite. They also make barbecue sauce, hot sauce, and a spice rub. I haven't actually tried the spice rub or the barbecue sauce, but I've tried the hot sauce. It is delicious. And their Carolina Reaper hot sauce uses one of the hottest peppers in the world, the elephant wang pepper. Just kidding, what? the Carolina Reaper pepper, <clears throat> obviously. Anyway, you can use offer code Linus to save 10% on all their products. You know, no, it's not made of elephant wang pepper. It's, no, but I just kind of want to try it now. It's hot. Have Is you never hot? tried it? Hmm. I think that I did, and it was unpleasant. Yeah. It, not like it tasted really good, but it was like... Oh, it's, it burns. Mm -hmm. It's burning. Like it burns not just when you pee, you know? Like just burns. Yeah, like It I doesn't think actually that, burn there. I tried it before, and I was like, wow, that was really great. And then like 20 seconds, seconds later, I was just like, <laughs> but I don't know, let's just do it again. All right. So this is this is in my mouth. Mm -hmm. Not too bad yet. Did you put the whole thing in? Yeah. All right. Well, stay tuned for the sweat breaking out on his brow over the course of the next hop. No, you don't get to take a drink already. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so right now it's pleasant, but like we're getting there. Back to Apple blocking yes. Linux installs. So their <laughs> T2 security chip is blocking Linux from booting on Mac devices. And the T2 security chip, the way it was sold to us anyway, is supposed to be about encrypting your data so that if someone steals your <laughs> so if someone steals your device, they can't get at it. Um, but instead, it looks like the new MacBook Air and Mac Mini 
that both come with the T2 chip embedded are going to, yes, okay, whatever. So the, uh, the latest iMac Pro, the latest MacBook Pro, so the new MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, any of the devices that Apple makes that come with the T2 chip embedded, they're gonna have a secure enclave, they're gonna have APFS storage encryption, touch ID handling, a hardware microphone disconnect on lid clothes and other security features, but the T2 chip also restricts the boot process. And it means that Linux support on Mac hardware is now not just bad or inconvenient, it is non-existent. By default, even Windows isn't bootable until you enable support for Windows via the Bootcamp Assistant on macOS. Wow. So what this will do is install the Windows Production CA 2011 certificate that's used to authenticate Microsoft bootloaders, but it doesn't set up the Microsoft approved UEFI certificate that allows verification of code by Microsoft partners. So even when the secure boot functionality has been disabled, the T2 chip is reportedly still blocking operating systems aside from Mac OS and Windows 10 specifically. I really like this headline that they have here where it's just T2, more like Terminator 2. Is this the register? <laughs> <laughs> but like I know so many programmers that use MacBooks and MacBook Airs all the time and all of them use Linux on it like they never use Mac OS or like sometimes they do but a lot of them just use Linux so I have no clue why they would do this I mean there's the obvious sort of snarky argument <laughs> well why are you buying a MacBook if you don't want to run Mac OS and I can come up with some pretty easy answers to that. Maybe you don't want to run Mac OS all the time. And also they're just Do pretty really good really? laptops. Also they're just pretty <laughs> nice hardware. And here's another thing, like people complain a lot about the repairability of Apple hardware. And it is a legitimate mm -hmm. complaint. We have run into that problem ourselves. However, for better or for worse, because of the ubiquity of Apple hardware, even though it's very difficult to repair, Finding someone who has gone to the effort of figuring out how to repair it can actually be easier in some cases. Do you get what I mean by this? Yeah, and finding spare parts is really easy too. Like stuff like power connectors, even if it's soldered, you can like find a dead one really easy and then just pew. And like we mean really easy in, of course, a relative sense. Yeah. Like, like my friends in engineering would make a good buck off of it. It's still hard and it's still a hassle and Apple could still support third party... Um, like service providers a lot better like, or at all <laughs> but at least these third party service providers keep fighting through and keep finding a way although the T2 chip looks like it really might kibosh a lot of this all right um, um, US internet traffic routed through China for two plus years yeah we this don't is... have a lot of time left so yeah and I don't really want to talk about that too much until it's confirmed yeah and of like, what was the other thing? Some of these are some of these topics are kind of like duh. Like Teal Ghost posted this on the forum. Google confirms that dark mode saves battery on Android. Really? <laughs> like you think? Anyway, the good news is we're finally getting dark mode. Um, Samsung is also planning to add it with their new One UI, which is sounds good. I hope. I don't know. When Samsung announces they're doing a new Android skin, it's like, will they make it better? Will they bung it up? <laughs> Will they finally fix my battery drain issue? I had I had it again the other day, and now it's now it's fixed again. So, actually, small iOS just really annoying thing. You can turn the keyboard dark, but then the area below the keyboard still stays light, so it just looks horrible, and I can't deal with it. Oh yeah, you've been using iOS for a little while. How's that going? I, I don't like it at all. There's just like a couple small things that like I got through the like the initial like not liking it because I just didn't know how to use it. Okay. Have you found some of the beautiful things though? Like being able to reposition your cursor with uh, 3D touch or force touch or whatever they call it on the phone? No, how do you use that? It's really cool. Because I've been really annoyed with like copying links. Mm, yeah, so do you have your phone on you? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is one of those like, I forget how I lived without it every time I go back to the iPhone. Um, so here, let's just like typey typey type some stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you want to reposition your cursor. Oh. Neat, huh? I had no clue how to do that. Yeah. So Apple does a really good job of some little quality of life things. And I'm at the point now 
where I think a lot of people assumed from my iPhone 10s video that I hated the iPhone or hated the 10s. I don't mm -hmm. I don't hate it. I just don't care about it. It's just not interesting. Yeah, um, and quite frankly, for me, there are things that drive me nuts about both sides. Like my Google Pixel 3 XL review is not going to be particularly positive either. And I think I'm just jaded and tired of phones. And so that's why <laughs> I'm not going to be our main writer for phone videos anymore because I think I just can't handle it anymore. So I'm still going to be like senior editor, but I like one of our better received phone videos over the last little while, the ROG phone was actually 95% prepared by Jake, not by me. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Take that okay. for what it is. I just want to like whinge about a couple more things. <laughs> sure, go for it. Is so, that the 10s or the yeah? Yeah, that's the 10s, right? So I can't put all of my icons down on the bottom. So like, you you only get four. I yeah. want five. Yes. In order to search something, I need to go all the way over to the left. No, nope, so, no, nope, nope. nope. Search is good. Yep. Oh, Here, how I do can I search? fix that for you. So you search just by swiping down anywhere. No, but you still you swipe down. Then you have to click on it. No, and it's no, it auto populated. Look, I can type. See, I didn't have to click it. Okay, so okay, they do have some stupid stuff like that though, where you'll like I think it's um, when you look up a contact no, but, or something, I think you have to actually click the stupid text field before you can start typing. No, but you get to it, and now I need to click search web, and oh. then it opens on Safari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Whereas like on the Pixel, you just go over, it searches your whole phone and the web. You know what's funny? I'm so and old. It's, it's just right at the bottom, like on my other phone, yeah. it's right here. Boom. I'm so old fashioned that whenever I want to Google search. I open Chrome and then t start typing. Ugh. I literally have maybe twice in my life used, even though on a lot of my phones, it's just <laughs> there by default. And I just forget it. I just like can't even see it. That Google bar that's on my home screen. I just, I just don't even use it because I'm old and stupid. <laughs> okay. It's kind of like Jake saw me. Well, uh, but like I've had that search bar on my phone on the home screen since I had a Samsung S2. So, like, how have you not gotten used to it since then? It, Jake, it's just, I'm just old. <laughs> I'm just old and stupid. So Jake saw me trying to pay for something with my credit card with tap the other day. And I took my whole card and I, like, put it down on the reader. <laughs> and he's like, wow, you're so old. And I'm like, what? And he's like, well, the antenna's right there, so you only have to go against it like this. And I'm like, Okay. Like yeah, I, no, I never gave I, any thought to where the to where the actual NFC or excuse me RFID element was inside the card, and if I had, I would have known that yes, I only have to put like I'm not an idiot. I know how RFID works, but I just never thought about it because I'm old <laughs> and I just I always just put it against it and it always just worked. So what do I care? So like I always put it against it because I did that for a little bit where it's like the end because I kind of felt cool. But it sometimes just it bugs out, and I find if you do the whole thing, it works more of the time. Well, there you go. I feel validated right now. Speaking of validation, we should probably validate some of our super chat. Um, oh goodness, people, because we haven't yet, and that's really terrible. Um, I can't read. It's it me, that. sad face. His highline is keep up the good work. Dave says, "Love LTT. Would love to see that you team up with Retro RGB for a retro gaming video." Interesting. We do have some retro stuff planned, so stay tuned for that. Dark Inertia, hi. Showdown, Channel Super Fun video <laughs> budget, gave us five euros. Believe it or not, Channel Super Fun is still fully funded. People are, excuse me, <laughs> I'm eating my jerky, I'm hungry. Um, people internally are allowed to shoot Channel Super Fun if they can find time to do it. They're allowed to spend the entire AdSense income from Channel Superfund on Channel Superfund, which means that over the last six months where we've done basically nothing, there's literally thousands of dollars in a bucket <laughs> that people could just spend doing cool stuff if they wanted to. Okay. I, but I'm just not pushing it. That's all. Do you know what I really want to do? A settling powered potato cannon. I know you want to do that, but that, I think, is not a particularly amazing idea. So they also have to... No, do you realize how dangerous acetylene is and how great it is in a potato cannon? I built one of these before, and we had to, like, wrap it in duct tape because it kind of exploded. And then it, like, really exploded. It was really great. <laughs> Zach Carter says, <laughs> it's my birthday. Happy birthday. Love your... Quality content in quotes. Thank you, Zach. 
<laughs> Sir Plexer says, instead of buying a better CPU, I would buy an OS made for gaming, cutting out the crap. Unfortunately, that doesn't really exist. Believe it or not, cutting the crap out of your OS doesn't really do much for gaming. Um, in fact, we still need to do that follow-up on Windows game mode. Oh, yeah. We should do that. Um, Laggy says, hi, Linus, love your videos. Will there be an ROG Rig Reboot 2019? Oh, wow, I don't know. Hopefully. Uh, we haven't even finished 2018 yet. Yes, thank you, Colton. Uh -huh. That's the plan. Um, Evil says, where's Lucky? Someone moved him over to 101, uh, so I plan to move him back, but I had put him in the, in the set there, and then, yeah, I think, I think it was Brandon. I think Brandon got rid of him. <laughs> it's not a waste of 20 minutes of your time if you don't spend 20 minutes moving him, Brandon. If you just leave him in his home. No, and I think it would have been really great. In my way. I need the space. No, but just think about how great it would have been for this Razor video to just have him in the background. Right? Oh, fucking <laughs> just chilling there, you know? Christian says, I've watched your content for five plus years, never fails to entertain me. Awesome. Neil says, want to show my support? Thanks, Neil. Oh, wow, there's so many of these. Laggy Tech is back again. Oh, man, Laggy Tech. I'm sorry. It was just because I wasn't looking at them yet. It wasn't that I like wasn't going to read your comment. <laughs> I mean, sometimes that is it, but sending more probably won't help. Um, C. Kurosu, would I notice any latency going from a TN to IPS for gaming? So we actually have a video coming soon. That's not really about that. Um, actually, yeah, it's really not about that at all. I don't know. I personally can notice the difference, but it's like that's if I have them side by side, like a 144 TN beside a 144 IPS, you'll notice. Yeah. But, but a lot of the time, I'll just be like, ooh, that IPS is just way better. I find the IPS advantages more noticeable than yeah. the TN advantages, but I can certainly see, like, if you're, like, we've got a 240 hertz TN from Asus in the office here. I'm like, in CSGO like whipping around, you can still see detail in like- It's amazing. On, on a wall in Dust 2. And it, it's, it's incredible. But I would, I would take IPS over that every time. By the way, this mm -hmm. guy also says, BT Dubs, Alex, you're a wonderful addition to the oh, team. Oh, why thank you. Kudos to you. Linus is okay too, I guess. Uh, Kaija, keep up the good work. Thank you. Um, Mina Desu says, don't forget they're not going to make a 1080 Ti anymore. I actually didn't know that. That kind of makes sense. Yeah, it's just kind of unfortunate. What do you want, Jakku? But also, whatever. We're reading Super Chats. Oh, perfect. Here you go. What is so, this? Am I in the... I'm just going to... Oh, folding. Okay. Yes, folding's great. Oh, yeah. Okay. People should fold. It's folding month. So in support of fighting diseases and things, we're going to give away three GPUs this month, a 1080 and two 1070s. And to win the two 1070s, all you have to do is fold on our team lmg.gg slash folding for more information. Are Do you, it. Are it's you really providing great. these GPUs? Yeah, I'm just pulling them out of my butt. Yeah. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> I hope you at least like put them in a plastic baggie first. Nope, no plastic bag. No plastic bag. <laughs> that All must right. have hurt. Yeah. Those are like the EVGA ones too, and they're like kind of, they're, they're pretty jutty. <laughs> um, Enkoi says, the jerky can get spicy. Here's a beer on me. <laughs> jokes on jokes on you. I keep the five dollars. <laughs> he, he has to pay for his own beer. And also, it really wasn't that bad. I remember it being a lot worse. Really? Okay. Yeah. I think I sweat a bit, but like. Hello world from Hong Kong says Ken. And I think we're pretty much good. Nice. All right. So thanks guys for tuning into the WAN show. We will see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Maybe different bat hosts. We'll see. I don't know. How do you yeah. think Alex did? Let me know in the comments below or in the chat. One of, one of these? If you think he was terrible. <laughs> you can also let me know if you thought he was good. Or just Linus's puns were really bad the whole time. No. Thumbs down for that. Pun, no, puns no. were epic. Oh, so we uh, we talked to YouTube's, um, I forget, I forget who they were. But thumbs down is apparently worse for your uh, algorithmic relevance than we thought. Oh. So we might stop encouraging people to thumbs down the video. So. Okay, so we'll see how that goes. Comment. <laughs> yeah, sure. That Linus was horrible.